Welcome to Power Charting. I'm Bruce Frazier, your host. Today's subject is going to be crude oil and stock indexes. We're going to focus on crude oil as a measure of economic strength or weakness and how it correlates with stock indexes. But first, looking at today's agenda, we are going to start with an intraday analysis of the S&P 500. It's going to be a new segment that we're going to do where we're going to start the program with an analysis of the current market environment, typically uh, short-term or swing trading. Uh, we will use different indexes. I'm interested in your input on what you'd like to see. We'd like to focus on this from a white coffee perspective. Then we're gonna get into our subject for the day, which this week is gonna be crude oil and the stock market. We're gonna correlate them and have a look and see if we can draw some conclusions that might be helpful to us. Then uh, we're going to do a case study on uh, two uh, energy stocks, followed by, if time permits, a look at banking stocks. Okay, here is a intraday chart, vertical chart, of the S&P 500 going back into middle to late June. And a really nice persistent uptrend that was well worth campaigning developed in late June and into early July. And here we are mid-month with a nice uptrend that has pretty persistently advanced. Is there a way that we could have identified or taken advantage of uh, this uptrend action from a trading perspective or even been able to use this for our uh, positioning purposes for long-term stock holdings that we would have liked to have owned or ETFs? So uh, let's take a further look at this. So here we are, 30-minute vertical chart, and you're going to see that a five minute point and figure chart pretty much encapsulated the movements of the 30 minute vertical chart. So we will match up intraday point and figure, which will be different time frames than say the vertical charts themselves. And so we need to uh, look at the best match. And in this case, this five minute works really well with the 30 minute period that we're looking back into mid June. Now, notice how the point and figure does a really nice job of identifying consolidations that we can count for point and figure purposes. What does this look like? Okay, well, here are some counts. So here is 27 columns, three box reversal. This is a three box method. 27 columns gives us 102.06 S&P points of potential. That's a lot of S&P points. And for those of us that are campaigning these swing trading opportunities, look at this beautiful setup that we have that is uh, very uh, straightforward in its counting. 27 columns. Uh, we have a jump up and out, which is a sign of strength after we have climac climactic action, automatic rally, a spring type event, followed by a minor sign of strength and a backup into an LPS, and then a big sign of strength followed by another LPS. And look at this big catapult wall that we get out of here which tells us that this accumulation was uh, substantial and important. So this gives us a count up to the area of 3015 from a count line of uh, 2934, 2932 ish. And then we have uh, additionally on the way up, as we would expect, we have a reaccumulation, 13 columns, gives us 49.14 S&P points. Doesn't quite get us up to the count. It's not a perfect uh, stepping stone reaccumulation count in terms of confirming the lower objective, but 
it does get us very close on the extreme count. This count, which gives us 26.46 S&P points, gets us up to uh, the confirmation of this count and this count. And so all the way up, as we saw last week with a much longer time frame, we have uh, very nice reaccumulations that just keep generating counts that take us up into the area that we're at. Now, the question becomes, uh, is this the end of the advance now that we're above 3,000 on the S&P? Well, not at all not necessarily, and our expectation is that an uptrend that is in force will continue to be in force. So we would look for in here a most likely another cause building process that would develop, that would produce a, let's, uh, so we have a count, let's see right here, this area would count and produce another reaccumulation structure or a distribution structure for some kind of a next move. And this is the thing that we'll be looking for. So it might be that we have higher prices still in this uptrend. We can see that there's uh, still potential here for higher prices. And then uh, also we would look for then climactic action, automatic reaction, some kind of a cause building process that would either be reaccumulation or distribution that will take place. And then uh, we would be um, counting that for the next potential move. Okay, so here, the last thing I want to do is uh, let's look at this area across here. This is nine columns. so. This is kind of our bonus point. Nine columns across this area right here. And this gives us a count, which you can see is classic distribution, again, on a minor scale, with weakness uh, here in the support area, minor sign of weakness, with a rally into a failing attempt to rally into a lower high, nine columns across gives us a count down to this area right here, which is uh, 2920, which puts us right in the middle of this accumulation area. So this gives us a very good idea of how far down the market wants to go before it starts to either build, re build accumulation or distribution. And we can see, of course, that it turned out to be accumulation for an important move up. So uh, here is some technique on how you can trade intraday with uh, these tools. And then also uh, uh, we can apply this in combination with our vertical chart analysis using the Wyckoff method. Okay, so that's that for looking at the intraday. Now let's take a look at crude oil as a measure of economic strength in the economy. And so you can see here that we have, since the beginning of 2016, you've seen this S&P chart numerous times, and here's our little um, rally area that we uh, just evaluated, well, sort of the end of it, the part from uh, middle of June on. But here we can see that uh, in the case, let me find my uh, marker. I'm going to pick a different color. And so here you can see that this rally that we've had, which was quite dramatic from 2016 onward, which is what we analyzed in last week's program, notice how crude oil made its low after an important decline at the same time that the stock market did, and then went into an uptrend with the stock market it had a, uh, an advance, had a little bit more of a correction here where it came down and set the second anchor point for the trend channel that we drew on these three points. But notice that we have a nice uptrending channel as is the case with the S&P and that crude oil pretty much is following with the stock market. Well, 
our view is that crude oil is a, in demand for crude oil, is a measure of the underlying strength of the economy. And so when crude oil is strong and rising, because the economy fuels itself on energy, and crude oil being an important component of that, we can see that there, the rising crude oil is a measure of the economic strength that exists overall in the economy. Well, here we can see that right into this upthrust right here, we can see that crude oil continues to advance into the middle of 2018, tops out a little bit early, and then there's another upthrust in crude oil right here at the upthrust in the S&P. There, both crude oil and the stock market turned down and notice how weak both are. Well, this is an important clue because the weakness in crude oil is telling us that there's weakness in the economy. And so this decline, which went from around $75 down to $42 for crude oil was substantial. And also there was substantial uh, breakdown of technical conditions in the stock market at the same time. Well, look at what has happened since. We've had a rally upward to new highs in the S&P, but notice the crude oil has rallied to a lower high and only got to the underside of its trend channel here at around 65 to 67 and a half dollars, and then turned down and so far has made a higher low, but it has rallied again into another lower high. So this creates some ambiguity for really for the economy and also potentially for the stock market. So uh, is all lost because crude oil is weak? Not necessarily, but it does say that the underlying conditions in the economy could be in question. Now, here's an interesting chart where what we do is classic market analysis where we're taking crude oil prices in relative strength to the S&P 500. And so here, same period, 2016, low in the stock market here, low in crude oil here after an important decline in crude oil. Look at the relative strength. It's way down, making new lows, and then crude oil starts to act better along here. It's a market performer to the S&P. So you think about that. This is an underlying commodity and it's acting uh, consistent with the performance of the S&P through this period. Then after a reaccumulation structure here, crude oil starts to accelerate into a higher rate of advance. We'll look at the relative strength. The relative strength here we can see is rising, which shows that crude oil is now rising faster than the S&P is. And so this is telling us that economic conditions continue to be uh, pretty good. But notice what happens right here, lower high in relative strength as crude oil goes up and makes an upthrust high with the stock market in September of 2018, which is the onset of the major decline in stocks and crude oil which produces the failure, failing rally that we have here. So, and now we have crude oil in a relative strength downtrend, lower highs throughout. So this divergence was really important and also was a good clue about the failing of the stock market at the same time and that that failing was the result of a weakening economy. So lower highs throughout and a downtrending relative strength. Okay, so now we're looking at the same data, same picture, much longer time frame. We're going all the way back to 2002. And notice the spectacular uptrend in crude oil from 22 on 2002 onward. And look at the relative strength the relative strength is just continues to be in an upward stride all the way through here with an acceleration into 
a hypodermic advance, which uh, creates a, an exhaustion condition for crude oil at around $145. And if you want to look at some of the uh, point and figure work that uh, was in this area right here, go look at my early blogs, which I wrote back, I believe at the end of 2015. And uh, subsequently I wrote a series of blogs on crude oil. And uh, it's very impressive, these point and figure counts that occurred at the highs and the lows and how well they worked uh, thereafter. So uh, do look at those when you get a chance. But what you will notice here is look at the spectacular decline in crude oil from $145 down below $35. This is a major economic collapse. Well, that goes in concurrence with the Great Recession of 2008-2009. And uh, then thereafter, you see that with the turn in the economy, you have an advance in crude oil that is very supportive of economic conditions getting better. And so we can see here that we have an advance in crude oil and then a market-related performance. Basically, crude oil performed with the S&P in its advance on the way up. Well, look what happens here. You have a series of lower highs here, and you have a series of lower highs in relative strength. Well, notice this point right here, right there. Try to draw an arrow. We can see that that is the last attempt to rally. Well, there's one more, but you can see the relative strength rallies up through its long-term moving average, and then it fails, and you can see that this is a, a pivot point, both on price and relative strength, that precedes a very important decline where there's a collapse from 2014 to that 2016 low. Well, that weakness in crude oil comes with weakness in the economy. That was a mini recession. That was a, uh, a very important slowdown in the economy that occurred in that period that w took crude oil prices from over 100 down to uh, nearly $25, just above $25. And then we have this rally that's occurred. So this is the area that we've just analyzed from here upward. And we can see that crude oil just continues to unwind through here. Well, now we have something akin to a pivot. And so this pivot point that we have is very interesting because what we really need to see, I hate to admit this when I fill my car with gas, but we really need to see crude oil start to show the ability to have strength through these two prior peaks. So if we can get crude oil to show some strength, that will be supportive of the economy continuing to improve and creating demand for energy prices. Okay, so here's a couple of interesting oil stocks. This is Chevron. Chevron is probably among the very best acting integrated oils. You can see here a classic uptrend. We have uh, up thrust through this uh, uptrending uh, reverse use of trend lines along here, but these up these throwovers are uh, overbought conditions, but it stays in the this uh, converging channel, and then a buying climax into the beginning of 2018, which produces a reaccumulation type structure. Automatic reaction, secondary tests, a spring, sign of strength, last point of support, and now we're knocking on the door of the resistance area. And if Chevron, which is a very well-run company, can jump up and out of this resistance, resistance area. This is liable to be the most important oil stock in the stable. Well, we can see here that the relative strength is, is uh, call it a market performer. It's actually got a bit of a downtrend to it. And this downtrend is, I think, very important in that it shows that Chevron is very well performing, but is not making a new high with the S&P. It's acting quite well, but I believe that a lot of the structure of why Chevron is acting as well as it is, is simply because 
It's an important, very large cap index stock. And I think the index indexation of the markets has made these very large companies that are in the Dow Jones, they're very large in the S&P, it makes them perform more like a market index. And so the fact that this is not yet really in a relative strength uptrend is a bit of a warning. Uh, it, it continues to be the class of the oil stocks, but uh, is uh, maybe somewhat affected by indexation. So let's keep that in mind. Here is another really interesting stock. Now this is an Argentine company and it's a big integrated uh, oil producer and explorer at YPF. You can see here has a, you know, it's a daily chart. So you can see here that there's a very important decline, acceleration into a climax. A Little hard to see the volume here, but this volume is quite high. And then there's a very good automatic rally here. And automatic rallies are uh, uh, very important because they demonstrate that after the climax, we have a climax here. And uh, God, my penmanship's getting better. So the automatic rally shows that there's good demand now present among a large informed interest that want to own these companies. And so here we can draw support across, oh, look at me, look at that great support line, along the climax low and then across the automatic rally high, we can see that there's a, a very good uh, well-defined resistance area that's put, holding back the stock during the accumulation phase. Well, let's say this is accumulation. And so we have a, a great, Look at here. This is what we would call a creek. And we can see that, notice these declines. Notice how after very large declines all the way through the accumulation area, uh, let's do this. Laser pointer. So we can see along here that the declines are diminishing. The volatility is coming out of YPF as it's getting further and further into its accumulation area. Classic Wyckoffian characteristics of an accumulation that's near completion. So now we have uh, an attempt to rally. This rally goes above the prior peak. It pulls back to a higher low and then it jumps out. Volume is good and expanding as it's pushing up and out. Well, now it's out and look, it's going sideways. It's not pulling back, it could, but it's not yet. And the, as it's going sideways, the uh, volume is diminishing. And that's a very good sign. Well, this is a daily chart. So let's have a look here at a weekly chart. Oh my gosh, look at this. So now, uh, let's, we have to draw some stuff here. Let's do a highlighter and um, let's uh, do a different color. This area here is what we just evaluated right here. Well, guess what? This is a spring and a test of this low. This goes back all the way to 2015. So here's a climax. So we just evaluated this decline here Here's a climax over here, and let's draw support that we can see through there with a spring type action. Look at this automatic rally, big sharp advance, and we can draw resistance up here, attempts to upthrust this area, this upthrust this, this whole, both of these upthrust the whole area and then fail right back into this area of accumulation. Well, now here, this appears to be on a minor scale accumulation that could lead to an important advance that could go up to resistance and potentially could go higher. I want to point out the relative strength here and look at how the relative strength has stopped going down, has turned up, and now the relative strength is above a rising moving average. And so, this 
rising moving average right here suggests that now YPF is leadership to the market. Now, this being an Argentine company could have its own unique risks. It could have issues regarding currency uh, valuations and so on. I'm not recommending this stock uh, per se, but I think it's a fascinating case study that is really worth uh, our time to follow along and see whether or not the stock can work its way back up to this higher resistance area. Well, this is begging to have a point and figure analysis done on it. And here we go. So first off, here is a distribution area that was developed back in 2014. And this distribution area count took us down to $13 to $8. And so kind of a wide range, uh, this area looks tighter than this because the scaling is one point up here at $40 and it's half point scaling down here. But look at what a nice job the point and figure chart did, this distribution area did, of saying that there's potential for decline in this stock that could um, uh, take the stock down significantly. So, and also these are distribution characteristics here and here, but we couldn't count those because if we counted this whole area, it would give us a uh, count that would be below zero. So we want to isolate our count into this region here, very conservative counting, but look at what a nice job it did of nesting the count right into the selling climax area. Then we've just analyzed the count area from the daily chart that we did two charts ago. And uh, that chart, beautiful chart, uh, gave us a count across 15 columns. And this takes us up to 36 to $37, which takes us into the realm of the 2014 high, makes perfect sense and gives us a uh, count, call it a trading count, that if it can continue to back up and show good strength and ability to pull back with volatility could take us up into that area. And then what we have is we have a count that takes us uh, across here, which is much larger, but we're not gonna count that yet because we want to see the uh, this count, the potential for this count to be fulfilled. And once we get into the area of this count and get up to this resistance zone, we'll look for reaccumulation and we'll look for evidence that the stock wants to go higher. And then we will start to take uh, larger segments of this count and uh, see if we can uh, put together a campaign in the stock. So again, uh, Oil, oil stocks, interesting place. We'll keep looking at these in the future. I want to thank you for your time, and we will see you again next week.